There is Silver Seniors on Tuesday, unless Pastor hears otherwise. He was planning that he hadn't heard that it was canceled. So there is Silver Seniors on Tuesday, but there is no Wednesday, no Thursday discipleship, and Rio is also closed on Friday. So the only thing happening during the week this week would be Silver Seniors. And then next Sunday, we will just have our normal times for everything, pre-service prayer, Sunday school, all that. Um, so I encourage you to grab, grab one of these. If you put stuff on your fridge, I put it on your fridge, or wherever you put it so you can see, just so that we know um, everything that's going on. I won't go through the rest of it. Well, he ran away. He has a lot to get through today, um, so I wasn't planning to go through it, but since he ran away, I'll go through it. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Um, this month we do have a potluck. That's the big thing um, on the fifth Sunday. So um, we will be figuring out if there's a theme or not um, for that day. I don't know where the heck you went. Okay, I'll keep talking because I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> that, last song, that, last song. that was a good song. Was They're all very good songs. Yeah. Well, it's a fresh start. It's a new year. New things. Just praying for a good year, praying for God to move. Oh, oh yeah, he for, I forgot it was communion. I have a communion now. I'll take care of it. You can. I'm ready for you. Thank you. I think we were saying we'll do it next Sunday after service. Is that what you're saying, Bruce? Yeah. Sorry, we forgot it was communion Sunday until we looked at the announcements. Did you say no Wednesday night? Not this week. All right. Okay. There you go. All right. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Hello, everybody. Howdy. All right. So I want to welcome everybody here. It's at Nancy Kemp, everybody online. If you're watching right now, I'm Pastor Kelly. Um, today is January 1st, 2023. I just want to welcome um, I want to, um, uh, I want to uh, wish everybody a happy new year today. So, I'm sorry I'm out of breath a little bit. Um, but just want to thank you for watching us today. If you're online, everybody here that made it today, I just thank you for coming today. Um, you know what? You, you were able to make it today. You were given another day of life, which is good. Um, today's communion Sunday, so we're going to do communion. We're going to start off by honoring Jesus, right? Um, I'm going to be reading on the book of Galatians. And the book of Galatians was written to Jewish Christians and Gentile converts in Galatia who were straying from the Lord by relying once again on the works of the law of Moses. Um, and uh, we're going to be in Galatians chapter 3, starting with verse 23. It says, before the way of faith in Christ was available to, all, to us, we were placed under the guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. It was revealed by Jesus. Um, let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. Verse 25, and now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. For you are, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. You know, you see that like when you when you come to Jesus, you put on new clothes. You put on Christ. And there's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you all are one in Christ, Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promises to Abraham, Abraham belongs to you, each one of us. So Apostle Paul, was uh, he wrote to the Christians of Galatia that they were no longer a slave to the law. And God fulfilled, the, he gave the law and he fulfilled it by himself. He fulfilled it himself by sending Jesus to earth. Jesus was fully God. And it had to take, it, God gave the law and it took God to fulfill the law and he did it through Jesus. 
And if we put our, and we're now, we're now all of us who, who put our faith in Jesus, we're justified by God through faith in Jesus. We're justified. We're no longer guilty of sin because that price has been, has been paid. We're no longer in debt. Everybody say, I'm debt free. I'm debt free from sin. The world's not debt free from sin, but we are debt free from sin. People that put, just say, that confess Jesus with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus was the Lord and he rose from the dead, they are debt free from sin. And if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we are, we are seen as righteous in God's eyes. We didn't do anything wrong. We are, we are, we've been, we've been, um, we've been freed from our from our sin from from our from our guilty status now we're clean we're righteous and all we have to do is put on Christ that means that means taking off your own your old sin clothes this means accepting the look him Jesus as Lord of your life and living for him living for him not for yourself when you get up in the morning you don't worry about you don't you don't he'll tell you what to do but you live for him it requires full submission and full surrender full submission full surrender it, re, it, re, it requires giving Jesus your entire mind body and soul everything so we're going to celebrate Jesus that he give that he's given us Freedom from sin, freedom from from He paid the debt that we, we that we should have paid, but He God paid it through His Son. So if you could if you could get your elements ready, we're going to take communion. So if the first thing I like you to do is peel your little um, the top part of your communion cup, and I want you to take that little wafer out that represents Jesus' body. I think everybody has a communion cup, I believe. And we're going to be reading from First Corinthians. Uh, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, starting with verse 23b. On the night when he was betrayed, when Jesus was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave thanks to his father for it. Then he broke it into pieces. I want you to break it into pieces, right? Two pieces. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's what we're going to do today. If you bow your heads right now. Dear Jesus, we, we do remember you. We remember your body. We remember your your body that was that was that took a beating for us, that was whipped, that was bloodied and pierced for each one of us. And and, and, and Jesus, we don't want to we don't want to forget that. We don't want to forget that ever. If it's anything that you ever remember in in, in, in our life, we want to remember what Jesus did on the cross because there's nothing, nothing we could have done by human effort to repay the debt of sin. And we thank you for that, Jesus, for you for you taking the brunt and the burden of sin on your shoulders on the cross and, and paying the debt. You can partake. All right, if you want to just peel, up, peel back your, your uh, juice, which represents the blood of Jesus. We're going to be in verse 25. In the same way that he, um, that he, um, in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. You can bow your heads. Dear Jesus, we, we thank you for the blood that you shed for all of us. We thank you for every drop of blood that came out of your body. You did it so you could, we, could, we, could, we could have, we could be a right standing with God. That we could, that we could get up every day, go about our lives, and, just, and not have to worry if we're good enough, we don't have to worry about where we're going to go after we pass away when our last breath um, comes into our life. It's because of the blood that we have life. It's because of the blood that we can just, we can, we can, we can live with hope and joy and, and peace. 
All right, you can partake. And verse 26 says, for every time you eat this bread like we did today and drink this cup like we did today, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Something special about communion. It's just all about remembering. We like to remember things. I like to remember things. We try to remember things. We write things down on calendars and, 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 and books and little pieces of like um, of uh, sticky notes so we remember things. But we want the, the most important thing to, to remember is what Jesus did for us. Amen. All right. So today is January 1st, 2023. You know, sometimes it's hard to believe that time is going so fast. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm saying I'm getting older, and you are too. And we're, and it's just, I can't believe it's 2023. You know, I remember 20 in, in 2000. It was, yeah, I guess it'd be 2000. I remember graduating from college. Me and Catherine, we graduated from college. Then after that, it's just like, it's been going down, down, and down. It's just, it's just been, this is time is flying by. You agree? You agree. I, I'm saying, I know, I know this is, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's just, it's, it's, undes it's indescribable. It's, it's hard to describe, like, time. Time is subjective in nature, but it's, it, it happens to everybody. Everybody has 24 hours in a day, right? But today, um, I want to start off today by giving you a word for the church for 2023. Every year since I've been here, since 2020, I got voted in. Um, in 2021, I remember in December, I, I, I was praying to God. I said, God, what do you, what's the word that you give to the church? And I can't remember the word for this year, I mean, for 20, 2021. 20 last year was keep, uh, fix your eyes on the Lord. That was your, that was the word for the church. So I was kind of just, I've been kind of, I've been kind of uh, asking God, what is the word that you want me to give to the church? What is the word of the year for, for Lancy Calvary? And he gave me a word and the, it is called just do it. And I think it's on the screen right there. So as my technician, just do it. That's the word for the, um, for the, the church this year. Just do it. Everybody say that. Just do it. I want everybody to say it because I saw one person's mouth didn't open. Just say, just do it. Okay, that's better or something like that. I'm a teacher and I come from a teacher background. And when I talk to students, I remember looking and always monitoring to see if the kids were, everybody's participating. And if they didn't, I always said, let's do it again. And I remember one time doing it 15 times until everybody got, the, got with the program. <laughs> because we have to, because I, because I value everybody. And I want everybody to participate. Like God does, right? But this is, this is so it's, the word for Lansing Calvary for 2023 is just do it. And the scripture that God gave to me was from James 1, 22 to 24. Chapter, James chapter 1, verses 22 to 24. I'm going to read it to you. And, and it says this. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. A woman observing her, uh, observing her natural face in the, in the mirror. They said man. They said his, but it could be her too. For he or her observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man or woman he or she was. God gave me this word, and I, I've been asking him, you know, what do you mean? What, why, why did you say this? Because God wants all of us in the game. He wants all of us in the game. There are sidelines in a there are sidelines in a field. There are sidelines on a basketball court. But God says, I want you to get in the game and just do it. Amen. 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 So I know God gave me this word. It's got a, it's a purpose. It's, it's, it's a reason. It's like uh, God wants us to be doers of the word and not only and not just hearers. I hear lots of things. I don't do all those things because some things that you hear you shouldn't do because they're dangerous. They will kill you. I'm not going to jump off. A, I don't want to go skydiving because it's dangerous. I don't know if that, that parachute is going to open. Usually it does, but what if it doesn't? That's why I just don't do it. 
But when God, but God, and I know downstairs when we're when we're starting Revelation, um, you know, Lewis said something that that maybe that, that I just that I think about. The Bible is inspired by God. Amen. God didn't necessarily God didn't write everything. He had people, instruments like us, to write it down. So they just did it. They just did it, right? If they didn't do it, they would just been a hearer. But they did it. They they applied. They applied what God told them to do, and they did it. Application is the name of the game. Amen. Application is the name of the game. Doing's the name of the game. If your wife or husband ask you to do something, you only hear it and you don't do it, they're not going to be happy. They're going to probably chirp in your ear until you do it, right? And that's the way, that's how God is. I don't know about you, but in my life, if God tells me to do something and I don't do it, God chirps in my ear and he chirps and he chirps and he chirps. And God is eternal, so he can, he'll chirp as long as I'm living and, I'm, and he'll, 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 chirp, he'll chirp as long as I have hearing. Amen? And all God wants us to do is just do it. Just do it. So that is the word, that is the word of the year for Lancy Covering. Just do it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit that throughout the year. Just do it. And I'm gonna revisit that text of James chapter 1, 22 to 24. I'm gonna revisit that. All right. Next on my agenda, because Catherine said I'm, I got a lot of stuff today. Um, just doing it. When you, when you when you just do something, you have to have to have you have to have something to do, right? That usually entails goals. And my next my next thing right here, this is a this is something I gave to everybody last year. Raise your hand if you remember last year getting this goal list right here. Okay, well, all right, you probably just didn't you probably didn't do it then. <laughs> but the, Catherine's gonna hand out this goals list right here, and this is something that God put on my heart. I believe that you have to have goals in life. You should have goals in life. And I believe that God wants us to have personal goals with him. And um, for my goals list that I made, I have a couple different um, areas of uh, personal goals for your personal uh, walk with Jesus. First one is prayer life. And uh, then you have reading, study, and servanthood. How are you going to serve? Using your gifts, talents, and experiences. How are you going to use what God has given you? Discipleship. Who are you discipling? Outreach. How are you going to spread the good news? Giving. How are, you, how are you going to give? How are you going to use your time, energy, support, money, etc.? How are you going to give? And other. What I, so what would I like you to do? I would like you to just like um, get on your hands and knees. I'd like you to pray um, to God and ask him, you know what? What do you want me to do this year for 2023? Like I said downstairs, this is a January 1st is a clean slate. So everything you did in 2022 is history. Today we're making new, we're, we're making new, new history. All right, we're making new history. So I want you, to, I just want you to think about this. I want you to think about all these different areas of your of your Christian walk because these are not things I just made up. These are just part of of daily life as a Christian, as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus. And I want you just to write them down. And you don't have to show them to me. I just want you. I just want you to be aware that you know when when you, when you follow Jesus, there are expectations. Do you believe that? Amen. There's expectations of being of being a Christian, and part of it's praying, and studying, and reading, and serving, and using your gifts, and discipling, and outreach, and giving, and other things. So I want you just to think about this when you take this home and you pray about it, and God just gives you something, and you write it down, and keep it on your refrigerator so you can see it every day. Every year, I make a goals list, my yearly goals for my personal, for, 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 for a pastor, and after that, I look at them throughout the year to see how I'm doing, Then at the end of the year, I put down yes, no, or kind of. 
So, but it, but it, but the goals drive me to reaching that goal. You got to keep you got to keep the goal right in front of your face so you can know what the goal is because you can forget things. That's why we do communion. We don't want to forget what Jesus has done, right? So this is something I just wanted to bring to your attention. All right, anybody, if you have any questions, come and find me after church. Oh. All right, so we're going to move on. Um, the month of January is Missions Month. And for, for January, we're going to focus on missions for the entire month of January. We have five weeks and five Sundays in January, so we're going we're gonna to focus on missions. So it's going to be a message that's related to missions. Um, we currently, for, for Lansing, California, we currently support 17 missionaries. That's a lot. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they said, how many missionaries do you support? And I said, um, I said, well, how many do you support? Uh, we, we support like four or five. Like we, we, we have 17. It's not a game or a contest. But I'm just, I'll just let them know this is what we support. We support 17 missionaries, and they represent 12 countries. And uh, out of the 17 missionaries, we have 11 foreign missionaries, five U.S. missionaries, which is 16, and we have one, one missions training organization. They train missionaries so they can go into the field and know what to do because you have to know what to do, right? If you, if you, if you, if you, I'm saying I can't be a, a, a neurosurgeon because I don't know anything about surgery. So I'm saying if, if I'm your neurosurgeon, you're not going to make it, brother. But I try to keep on. I try to keep ongoing communication with these missionaries that we support, and um, we've actually had a couple stateside missionaries come in to speak at a church. We had a couple speak last year, and uh, and many of our foreign missionaries send monthly newsletters. And I actually, I'm going to read a couple um, throughout this month, and uh, and some of them can't. They don't send anything because of their location. Because if they did and they got caught, off with the head. I don't want to see somebody sat on a platter on CNN or something like that. So I, 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 I understand that. I understand that you know that um, that many of our that some of our missionaries in a hot, they're in hostile foreign um, nations. And if you say the word Jesus, you, you get your tongue cut off plus other things. But our current monthly giving for um, for our missionaries is five hundred dollars per month, and this comes from our general fund and our and our tithes and. In the general fund, if you don't know anything about Church of County, the general fund is what we pay for things, our operational things, the heat that we that we feel good right now in. You know, it feels good with heat, doesn't it? You, how many people like heat? <laughs> how many people like lights? I'm saying it, it's okay to go to go to go rustic and, and burn candles and everything like that, but I like to have lights so I can see. But um, but my vision for 2023. And it was similar to last year is to is to um, support our missionaries through missions donations and missions pledges. And the goal, my goal, like it was last year, is to um, is to reach five hundred dollars per month for missions giving. So today, you can help with this goal um, by making a pledge. And I want to show you this pledge card right here. Okay, it didn't come out real good. All right, but if you could. This is the pledge card right here, and um, and uh, the pledge card has a top and it has a bottom. The top is for the top is for you, I believe. The top is for you. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, the top is for you, and the bottom is for the church. And this is um, if you could if and if God is prompting you to um, if if, if you. Feel like God is prompting you to um, be one of our missionary pledge partners. I'm saying, feel this out. You know, listen. Do what God ever God to ask you to do. That's all you can do. That's all I always say. I don't. I'm not a person who likes to just talk about money and all that stuff because I really don't care. Because you know, giving is between you and God. It's not between me and you, right? It's not between me. It's between you and God. So if God's, you know, if you feel like God's a person your heart or telling you, speaking to you, do what you got to do. But um, this is what it looks like. So you would actually return the top portion to the church. You can put it in the, uh, you can just, you can put it in the tithe box or you can just give it to me or Catherine or something like that. Then you keep the uh, bottom, you keep the, um, 
You keep the top person and you, you, you turn in the bottom portion for the church. So um, today, to kick off missions giving, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a donation. I'm saying I'm going to make a pledge for $100 again um, for this year. So I haven't filled it out, but I'm a captain or myself will fill it out. But we want to kick it off, and I just want to kick off $100. So um, we're kicked off. So, if, but as, like I said, you know, if you if you like to, you know, if you uh, if you would like to, um, you know, make a pledge, just you know, do whatever God's asking you to do. There's no, it's no, it's low pressure. I'm not a high pressure salesman. I don't like salespeople in the first place because they pressure you. They while you walk in and they smell you. Oh, money. <laughs> but so that's 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 the uh, the missions pledging um, partnership with Lancy Calvary. Uh, if you have any questions, come and see me after church. If you need a pledge card, they're going to be in the back table. And uh, um, we'll go from there. All right. So let's get into the message right now. So the title, the title of today's message was called The Birth. The Birth. And we're going to examine the birth of missions. The birth of missions. And we're going to be in Matthew uh, chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 27, Jesus had been had just been tried by Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And Pontius Pilate found, found no wrongdoing with Jesus. He didn't do nothing wrong. But the crowd, which included the leading priests and the elders, chose Jesus to die on the cross. They basically killed an innocent man. They put an innocent man to death for not doing anything. Jesus was, Jesus was perfect in all of his ways, but he died a criminal's death. Jesus was perfect in all his ways because he never sinned. And the only thing that he did was show people the kingdom of God. That's all he did. And if that's wrong, that's not good. That's all he wanted to do. And that's all Jesus wanted to do is show the world what the kingdom of God looks like. That's all he wanted to do. That's what we're called to do. Somebody persecutes us, you know, whatever. It's too bad, I guess, because I'm, we're called to show the world what the kingdom of God looks like. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.21 right here. 2 Corinthians 5.21. And it talks, it, 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 it says something, it says about, about Jesus. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That's all he did. Jesus came down from heaven to earth, cultural shock. It had to be a shock for him. He had to come, he came down to, um, to basically um, show us what the kingdom of God looks like and make us right with, um, um, with God. That's what he did. And he got hammered for it. He got, he got killed for it. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. But it had to happen. You know, many times, many times in life, certain things have to happen in order for other things to be birthed into existence. Some things have to happen in order for other things to be birthed into existence. In the birthing process, the birthing process by nature is violent, is often violent and painful. Genesis 3:16a talks about this birthing process. It says, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in a pain you will give birth. And this is God talking to Eve. Adam and Eve had just sinned, and God told Eve, one of your consequences is when you give birth, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt real bad. I've never given birth, but it does not look fun. I've never given birth, but it doesn't look enjoyable. It doesn't look enjoyable. I just remember, I remember when my wife was giving birth on the set, she was grabbing my hand, and that's the hardest she's ever grabbed my hand. And it hurt. It kind of hurt the way, actually. And I'm surprised. Because she's not saying, she's got like little delicate hands or whatever, but she grabbed my hand like a man. But the truth is, 
The truth is that birth had to happen for you and me to get here, right? It had to happen. Your mother had to go through that birthing process in a hurt. And she, I'm sure she would probably, she might have been screaming or letting out some grunts because of her. But birth is part of humanity. You know, for life to occur, birth has to happen. Even Jesus was birthed into the world. You know, birth, birth is part of God's kingdom. And birth is, and it was part of being missions up and rolling. You know, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 28, starting with verse 1. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. And the other Mary was the mother of James and was supposedly the sister of Jesus' mother. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. Man, that would have been crazy, wouldn't it? That would have been crazy. Angel came down from heaven, rolls a stone, and sit, just sits down. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. <laughs> that, makes, that made me laugh when I thought about that. Like, they saw this stuff. They just dropped dead. They just dropped down on the ground. Just like, oh, man. They just, like, they just couldn't take it. It makes me think of uh, the Christmas story when uh, when the, one of the bullies um, from uh, the neighborhood and stuff like that, uh, ran, um, Ruffy's little brother just um, sat there, sat there like a, like they said, like a something, like a slug. <laughs> that's what I picture. That's what I picture. Um, that, um, the uh, that's what I picture in this situation right here. Verse five says, "Then the angel spoke to the woman." Don't be afraid, he said. I don't. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Verse six. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. I like that part right there. Like, um, he isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said he would, just as he said would happen. The Bible is full of different things that said that 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 that. that Full of things that are, that are going to happen. Full of things that did happen. Verse 7, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Remember, remember. Remember Jesus today with communion. Remember, remember is a part of life. Like birth is. Verse 8, the woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. Have you ever, I was thinking about, you know, have you ever been frightened, also filled with joy? That's a weird dynamic, isn't it? You're, 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 you're scared, but you're also just joyful. That's a weird dynamic, isn't it? Just kind of weird. And as they, and verse nine, as, and as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, "Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there." All right. So we got the, we got the, uh, we have we have this, we have we have what's going on initially. Jesus had died. Um, angel came to angel came and told the Marys, both Marys, that you know what, don't be afraid. Um, just you know what, you're gonna be, it's gonna be good. And uh, you know what, they see Jesus, and now they uh, ran. They're, they're, they're gonna go tell. Um, they're gonna go. They're to go they said, go tell my brothers to leave Galilee, and they will see me there. All right. So we got the kind of the framework for that right there. Okay, verse 11 right here. Verse 11 is pretty interesting. Verse 11 through uh, 15, it's just like the cover-up. This is, this, is really, this, is really, this is really interesting. Verse 11, as the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large lot bribe. And the leaders... Um, the leaders in the Jewish community, um, so the, the elders were leaders in the Jewish community who were respected for wisdom. But they, they were going to 
use manipulation because they, they, they knew what was, what was happening. They knew that this was, what, this was the truth. The Bible said Jesus was going to rise after death, right? And it happened. But their disbelief wouldn't let them believe it. Verse 13, they told the soldiers, you must pay, you must say Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were, to, were told to say. The story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. <laughs> it didn't change. They still tell it today. Body was stolen. But we know that that's a lie. That's just, I'm, I'm saying it's just kind of like, you know, I wouldn't want to be in the, the, the Bible in a history book, like knowing that, like, this is the truth. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. All right. And, and, and the most important part of this text, which I want to bring up, is, is, is 16 through 20 right here. And this is the birth of missions right here. This is, this is what we're going to focus on today. Verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. All authority in heaven and on, her, and on earth. Therefore, okay, let's, I'm saying, come on, come on. Go. It might make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples, new disciples, it should be an ongoing rotation of disciples. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am, and this is this is this is Jesus' stamp of approval right here. We like stamp of approvals. We like stickers. When you vote, you get a sticker. But this is Jesus' stamp of approval right here to all his all the people that are going to follow him, including us right here. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. The birth of missions. The birth of missions came from the obedience of Jesus. And the truth about obedience is that it has to be learned. The obedience has to be learned. It must be learned. It must be birthed to an, into existence. No one is born obedient. That's, good for, that's, that's actually a good thing, though, because it's like that, that gives you hope that you can be obedient. Amen. No one's born to be, and this included Jesus. And we see this in, in Hebrews 5.8. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the, the things he suffered. Jesus' obedience was learned through suffering. Through trials. From going through tough things in life. That's when we learn obedience. And we learn obedience because we have to lean upon God in those times. You either lean upon God or you lean upon yourself, right? And this is true for missions and missionaries also about learning obedience. You know, many missionaries have and they have and they continue to endure hardship for the mission that we've all been commissioned to embrace. Do you, I, I, I don't truly believe, I don't truly believe that, you know what, when somebody, you know, somebody goes to, you know what, let's, 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 let's be real about it. You know, America, we have so much here. When you come here from another country, people just light up. Food. Opportunities, resources, and if you if you're born into America, I don't care if you're if you were born and you're poor, you still got much more than 
in other countries and other nations, don't we? And it takes, it takes a person who's obedient, who, who, who was from America, who grew up in America with all the things that America offers to go to a foreign land that is not in, like America, that's, that has less resources, that has less everything. It takes obedience, doesn't it? And that's a reality that that's a reality of, 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 of missions and missionaries that it took that it, it takes obedience. It takes obedience. And it took the son of God, Jesus, to birth this mission because it took obedience for him to get on the cross and endure the cross. Because what if, if you ask the question, if you ask the question. With a survey, I don't know many people that said they, that said that have said it before that they would want to endure that cross for sin. But but Jesus did it because he was obedient to his Father. And the question that we all must personally ask and answer is: Are you willing to embrace the mission that? Jesus gave gave to the church to each one of us. Are you are you are you are you are you willing? Are you obedient to embrace what God is? But but the Bible, like I, I like what Lewis said. We know the word. The word is the word is in our heart. But are you willing to be obedient to that? We come to church. We come to church. We listen to podcasts. We do lots of things, and the word is in us. The word is in us. I, there's no doubt about that, is it? The word is in it. It's in us. But are you obedient to the word? That's the question. That's the question of the set of the, of, the, of, of a lifetime. Many people are not obedient. Many people are not willing to do what God asked them to do, even though they go through the motions and do things that you know that good Christians do. That's the point of stuff like that. Obedience has to trump everything. We have to ask ourselves, are we willing to go and make disciples of all nations? And when I'm not talking about Africa or, or, or Sweden or, or, or whatever, or, or Cambodia, I'm talking about making, I'm taking, making disciples in your neighborhood because a nation doesn't have to be overseas. It can be in your neighborhood. It can be somebody who lives right next to you. Amen. 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 That's what, that's what I'm saying. That's what I believe God wants us to do. He wants us to say, yes, I will do it. I will make, I will make disciples everywhere I set my feet. It doesn't have to be formal. It doesn't have to be as a church. He's called each one of us personally to do it. I may make, make, make disciples and my wife doesn't make disciples. That's on her head. It's not on my head. Because I know she knows the word. At least she acts like she knows the word. But there's a difference between knowing and doing. That's why God gave me that, that give me that, that, um, that word, doers of the word. Just do it. That includes everything in your life. And the question we have to ask, are you willing to continue with Jesus' birth? Jesus birthed missions, and he's put us in charge. Maybe that wasn't a good idea, but he did it. We have, we have been tasked with the, the, the mission to make disciples. We've been tasked with it. We've been tasked with it. Let that resonate in your mind. We've been tasked with making disciples. And Jesus birthed missions and has asked us to raise it up and take care of it by making it a priority in our life. Missions is the baby that Jesus gave to everyone who follows him. Amen. I'm going to read that again. Missions is the baby that Jesus gave to everyone who follows him. If you say you follow Jesus and you're not making disciples, shame on you. 
I'm not trying to throw condemnation at you. I'm just, I'm just being real with you and stuff like that. It's, two, it's 2023. Jesus has been gone for a long time, but the mission never ended. His, 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 his gifts are still in operation. People are still getting healed. People are still getting set free. Capt people are, 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 that are captives are getting let go of, out of captivity. So in a sense, because, because missions is the baby that Jesus gave to everyone who follows him, we're all parents of the mission. We're all parents of the mission. So you might not have many kids biologically. You might not, you might, you might, you might have many, but we're all parents of this thing called the mission, of the Great Commission. Amen. Amen. I'm feeling fired up. I'm feeling fired up inside. I feel like boxing or something. Don't, don't, don't get me in the ring. I'm going to throw some jabs and some uppercuts. I'm serious and stuff. I'm, I'm serious and stuff like that. We have to be, we have to have this fire burn inside of our spirit. And we got to be burning for Jesus every day. And I'm just saying, we have to be doing this stuff. That's the only way to be on my mission and the only way to be obedient is that fire. We have to have that fire. And we're going to talk about that later um, in, 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 in the, the weeks to come about that fire um, that we're going we're gonna to talk about. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to get deep into some stuff. Deep like a, like a, 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 a deep hole. But we're going to close. But I want to leave you with four realities about missions. These are four realities when I was researching and studying about missions. In the first reality about missions, Jesus put all of us in charge of missions. I want you to see, it says all. It don't say select some people. He said all of us in, in charge of missions. I don't, I really feel that, I really feel that God has called me into like, his, his, his really, has given me like a coaching personality. Because I'm saying like coach, like uh, the Bears, coach, coach Dicka, you know, the Bears, you know what? I just I feel you know, and I and I and I know that Jesus has put us all in charge of missions. So that means that we all play a part. So I'm always trying to encourage and pump people up and stuff and get them fired up, fire up, chips, the Chippewas, this uh, Central Michigan Chippewas. That's going to college. But Jesus put all of us in charge of mission. The Bible says Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, He tells us to go. Jesus started missions, and he's handing the baton over to each one of us. You have the baton. What's you going to do with it? Boom, boom, boom. Now we have authority over missions. And our authority comes from Jesus' authority that, he was been given, that he's been given. So we have authority. That's what we can walk around in confidence because Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. We have it too if we follow him. That's why we don't have to worry about anything. You don't got to worry about, you don't got to worry about you know, if you're out there doing what you're supposed to do and, 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 and bullets go flying or, or people try to carjack you or something like that. Let them take your car. You get another one. If you get shot, they, that's why they got doctors. It's the truth. If, if you got credit cards, you get another one. We, we're a family. We're here to support each other, aren't we? If something happens to any one of you guys, any one of you men or women and stuff, we're going to help you. As much as we can. I'm not going to buy you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to buy you a, a new car. <laughs> I'm saying, don't be trying to ask me, ask me that and stuff because I, I just can't afford those payments. But I'll help you as much. I'll get you a nice used one. Certified. But then we just, you know, we have authority over missions. And this is why we all have to be on the same page with, with the mission. If we're not on the same page, if we're not even missionally minded, it does, it, it, we, we, we're going to fail it's not going to go good, and that's what, and that's what you know. The, the you know, throughout history, people have been preaching this and teaching this and trying to live this and stuff. And it's like the mission has to, has to, has to go on, and it has to be us who, who does it. 
All right. Um, the second reality about missions, we all have a part to play. It kind of goes with number one. We all have a part to play. The Bible says make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of all neighborhoods. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this sounds like we have some work to continue. It never stops. We're all called to make disciples. But in order to make one, you have to be one. And and we're learning this right now in discipleship class with my wife. She's facilitating it. None of that material is hers. And she's even said it before. She doesn't have time to, to, to make that material. But she's facilitating this study about making disciples. But the bottom line is that we all play a part in God's kingdom. We all play a part. I don't care if you don't think you do. You do play a part. Because there's going to be people that you have access to that I don't have access to, and vice versa, and vice versa with each of you. I don't know. I don't live in Lansing. I don't even. I, I, I don't even. I don't know a lot of people in Lansing, but you do, right? You know people. You go places. You shop at Kroger's. You go to doctors' hospitals. You do whatever. So you know people that I'm never going to have access to. I'm going to have access to the people in my spheres of influence. But we, we all play our part in God's kingdom. Our gifts and our talents and our experiences do play a part. But the Bible is very clear that everyone, I want, and, and, and I want you to say, I want you to say, I want everybody to say, everyone is called to discipleship. We're all called to be disciples and make disciples. And this isn't coming from me because I'm not, I'm not going to be that old naggy pastor that just always gripes about stuff. I'm just saying this comes right from the Bible. So if you have some beef with, the, beef with me, you can take it up with God. Go to the big fellow and stuff and see if he don't smack you around a little bit. And punch you in the teeth a little bit and stuff like that. Stop you on the head. All right. The third reality about missions is that we're all called to teach others about the kingdom. We're all called to teach others how to pray, how to study, how to serve, how to give, how to live a life that reflects the kingdom. And, and, and this, third, this third reality about missions, it comes from being a disciple. Jesus taught us all these things and expects us to teach others. When you get taught, it doesn't stop you. The buck keeps on going. You got to keep on spreading it, spreading what you know, spreading what how you you know what you know about the kingdom, how to pray, how to study, how to serve. It doesn't stop right there. I'm saying when it stops here, that means that you're just a convert. And, and Jesus did not call us to be converts; He called us to be disciples. And we make disciples. Yes, some churches make converts, but we make disciples. And that's how the law gets rolling. And that's how things grow. That's how Jesus' ministry grew. He started with 12. And now how many people does he have all over the world? How many people does he have? Lots of Christians. Lots of Christians. And Jesus, um, and Jesus didn't say try to teach or I hope you teach one day. No, he said that we're expected to teach. We're expected to teach others about the kingdom. There's an expectation that comes from following Jesus. An expectation. And, 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 and it's, 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 really, it's, it's, it's not good though, but you know what? Some people just don't like that expectation. You know, they don't like the expectation. They think, you know, they think this whole thing about following Jesus or, you know, following Jesus, coming to church once a week, you know, maybe on a Wednesday or whatever. And that's all they do. They don't do. They're not being disciples. They're not making disciples. We're not spreading the word. We're not doing what we need to do. It's got to stop. We got to just continue going. We got to get this. We got to get it in our mind that we are. We are. We got to. We got to be mission minded everywhere we go. And number four, last one right here, um, fourth reality about missions, Jesus is, is with us always. Jesus is with us always. No matter where we go, he is with us, and he will be with us to the end of the age. And by the way, the church age, once the rapture happens, the church age is done. So right now, and I remember saying downstairs that we play a, a, um, a big part right now in this age that we're in right now, the church age. We're, we, we're, just, we're just Gentiles, and we, we, we've been grafted into God's family. But we still play a big role. After the rapture happens, it's going to be the, the age of the Jews. 
They're going to be coming back. They're going to be coming back. And I'm reading all this stuff, and I'm glad Lewis is taking on Revelation. Good for him. And, stuff like that. and I want to encourage him to do it because it's a tough book. But it's a book that, you know what, I, I, I say this. At least, I'm saying, he is, he is doing the best he can do with what God's given to him. That's good. That's good. That's, that's good because I'm saying, because I know pastors, I know some pastors don't want to tackle that. Like Lewis is running up there with his head, his, his helmet on his pads and, and trying to knock him out. Yeah, that's good. That's a club right there. That's a club right there. That's good and stuff, you know. But but he but Lewis knows and everybody knows that Jesus is with us always, so he can we can tackle that stuff. I tackled Romans. That was a tough book. We were there for over a year, but I tackled it. I didn't always get the, I didn't always tackle the best, but I tackled it. But no matter where we go, he's with us to the end of the age. This means whatever mission God gives you, Jesus is right by your side. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And, and, and on earth. Because of this, we have authority. Jesus' authority has been transferred to us. Amen. Where he goes, where we go, he goes. Be, and this is good because we have lots of work to do and there's lots to get done. We know that the end of time, the end of the church age is coming and the rapture is going to be happening. You know, but it's just like, you know, we have work to do. But, but God has given us, he's given us what we need. And I do believe that, I do believe that the, the prophecies in the Bible are starting to, they're, they're actually coming to fruition. They're coming to the, they're, they're coming to the existence um, they're, they're, they're happening. They're basically just happening. And people, some people want to deny it, but you know what? You cannot deny the Bible. You cannot change prophecy. The Bible has been written, and it was written years ago, and it's happening right now. The Bible said that Israel was going to be a nation in one day. It happened, on, it happened in 1948. I don't know. I don't believe, I don't believe it was a Miss Cleo thing. I don't, I don't believe so many, I don't believe that that was that was prophesied by a, a um, that was that was that was that was divine. That wasn't something that was made up. You can't make this stuff up. One day Israel becomes a nation, 1948. May, I can't May 12th or 13th or something. May 14th, yes. So things are happening. Things are happening. But the, the thing, but the thing about it. Is that, and we're going to end here. The great thing is that God has given us all the tools, the tools to fulfill the mission. Everything we need to fulfill the Great Commission has already been birthed into existence by God. Everything. We don't need any super cape. We don't need anything else. He's given us. He's given us everything that we need. All we have to do is we have to, we have to say yes and choose to be obedient. Amen. 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 All right, you can bow your heads right now. All right, dear God, right now, I just I thank you for this, 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 you know, today, God, for you know, for the beginning of Revelations, God, for the for this the sermon today, God, about the birth of missions, God, you've already birthed everything to existence that we need. Um, you know, everything we need is right there at our fingertips. All we got to do is just say yes. Yes, and just accept them. There's the, we, we've had the gift of your son. We've had the gift of, um, of the Holy Spirit. We have spiritual gifts. We have the church. We have each other. And there's nothing that we, that we need. All we, all, I, I believe, God, that's all you're looking for is, is a, a, a willing heart. A heart that's full of, a, of, a, of obedience. A heart that's just positioned towards you in the kingdom, in the mission of just of your of your kingdom. So God, I just pray, I just pray, God, that you know what, that we just, you know, that we just be, you know, we 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 get on fire. We just we um we be we become that church that is just missionally minded. God, you've given us opportunities to do this. You've given us real. But God, you know what? If, if, if that's not something that somebody wants to do, God, give them, give them ideas. Give them dreams. Give them things that they can do with their abilities and gifts and talents. You know what? It's not a one-size-fits-all underwear type of thing. It's just, you know what? Maybe things aren't 
for you. I, I know personally there are things that, that are not for me. And, I, and I'm saying it'd be hard to do, but it's just, it's just you know what? It is, it is. You're, gonna, you're, you're a good father, and you're going to put us in positions that utilize our gifts and talents and experiences on your behalf and, 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 and promote and fulfill the mission that you've given us. So right now, I just want to—I just want to ask anybody right now um, if today's message just kind of just resonates with you, and you just kind of like, you know what? I know that missions is a real thing, but I just—I just feel like I just need to be more missionally minded. I want God. I want to be on. I want to be a hundred percent on mission for God's kingdom. I want you to raise your hand. All right, and I, and I know that's with me too. I'm raising my hand, even though I'm praying. God, I just, I just pray right now for all the people here that raise their hand, the people that are maybe watching online, God, that you would just, you know what, just give us, just make us aware. You've given us everything, but make us aware of everything that we have because of you. We, we lack nothing. We lack nothing. You've given us everything that we could possibly have. And because of that, you know, you, you said in the Bible that where we're going to, you know, that we're going to do greater works than Jesus. And he did some good stuff. So I just pray, God, that, you know what, that, you know what, that people, you know, people here, and not even just at our church, but people just all over the world would just, you know, just, they would just submit to you and surrender and, and just, and, and, and God, you would just help them um, take away fear, or take away any type of anything that's causing them to causing a block between you and their obedience for you. When Jesus defeated, when your son defeated sin, he took, he took everything. Everything got thrown out of the, everything, the kitchen sink got thrown out. And there's nothing. We can come straight to you. There's nothing. There's no blockages. There's no blockages. There's nothing that can get in the way if we choose for it not to get in the way. So God, I pray for all the people that raise their hand, God, that in myself, God, that you would just, that we would just, you know, be obedient in every situation, even when we're tired, even when we're, we're just, we're lacking patience, and even when we're, we're, we might be scared or fearful or whatever it may be, that we just, that you give us, that you touch us, that you would touch us and just um, propel us forward to, to do whatever you want us to do in that situation. We thank you. All right, right now, I just want to ask a question to everybody here and everybody watching online. Um, I want to ask you, um, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? And when I ask you that, um, who do you answer to? Is, do you, do you, do you, when you get up, are you listening to what God's asking you to do, or are you just doing what you want to do? We have to know, the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says that, you know, by, um, you, if you want to, if you want Jesus to be your, to be the Lord of your life, you have to ask. You have to ask Him. You have to. You, it's a conscious decision. So um, there's, you know, there's, you know, unfortunately, sin came in the world, and and, and we, we have sin. So the only way to um, to um, man, I'm having trouble. The only way to um, Uh, man. Yeah, the Bible says that he, that he doesn't want anybody to perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He doesn't, he, you know, Jesus came to earth and lived a sinless life. And he did it for us um, so we could have everlasting life. So we could live, have eternal life in heaven. And, you know, I just, I just you know, people, if you're watching right now and you, and you don't know Jesus and Jesus is not the cornerstone of your life, 
I'm saying I want you. I'm saying I want you to. I want you to. Um, and you want if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to repeat after me, because this is not a. I don't know. I just I, I pause because I just I, just, I see. Um, I feel, I just feel like, you know, I just feel like this, what it would feel like if, with eternal separation, just not, just knowing that God is no longer available to you. That would, that, that wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be good. So I just want you, I want anybody, anybody that's watching right now, and, and if you have made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to repeat after me. This is a salvation prayer. This is asking, um, asking um, God to um, just take away your sins through his, and, 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 and he did it through Jesus. So I want, I want you to repeat after me if this is you and if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Dear God, I come to you today with a humble heart. And I surrender my life to you. I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that he died on the cross. And you raised him three days later. Father God, fill me with your spirit so I can know you intimately. So I can serve you the way you want, that you want me to serve you. And that I can and, and that I and I can follow you the rest of my life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, if this was you and you and you and you and you made Jesus Lord of your life. First, I just want to say congratulations. And next thing I want to say, I'm just going to just get right to the cut and chase. Um, I, I, I invite you to come to Lansing Recovery so we can walk with you. And just and um, you're going to have lots of questions. And um, we'd like to walk with you. We'd like to disciple you and, 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 and teach you the ways of the kingdom. Because we're called to be ambassadors. We're called to... We're called to walk the way that God wants us to walk. So I encourage you to come to, um, I encourage you, I invite you to come to Lansing Calvary. All right, um, for the, um, everybody here and everybody online, if, if anybody has any um, prayer needs, raise your hand or you can come up to the altar. Does anybody have any needs or anything like that? Anything that's, anything, anything this week that has caused you, caused you hardship or it's caused you stress, anything that's caused you, um, any just has caused you to, um, just caused you cause division between you and God. pray, um, you know, because I know, you know, I, I know personally myself that I, you know, there's things, you know, that come up every day that I need prayer for. I don't know about you, but you know what? I'm not a perfect person. I'm far from perfect. And, you know, I need, I need God's grace and mercy every day. I need God to be walking with me every day. I need, I need to walk with God every day, I should say. And I just want to, just want to pray. I just want to pray. All right. And, you know, God, just, you know, just thank you for just, you know, thank you for being a good God to all of us, God. Just thank you for being with us in, in good times and bad times. And, and you know what, just thank you for, you know, just being who you are. You're the creator of the universe. You're, you know, you're the, you're, you're you know what, you, you're the beginning and the end. And God, you know what, truth do anything without you. And God, I just pray, God, for 2023 that, you know, that that all of us make you a, a just make, uh, just all of us here 
Uh, we ask that you play a bigger role and part of our life. God, this is, you know, this is, this is your church. This is your city. This is your neighborhood. And God, I'm just asking you, God, I'm just asking you that you would just, you know, you know, just show up, God. You know, I mean, we know, we know what, we, we know you. Everybody here knows you. Everybody here has experienced you. But God, we just want more of you. We want to, we want to experience you on a level that we've never experienced you before. God, help us be obedient. God, help us through our hearts. God, help us through things that have happened to us in the past. God, just be heal us. God, heal the areas in our life that need to be healed. God, we all, we all have hurts. We all have pains. We all have things that, you know, that it didn't go the way that, that we wanted to go. But that doesn't stop you from being God. You're still God. You're God through our, 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 our happy times. You're God, you're God through our sorrows. You're God through life. You're God through birth and, or, or, or death. But you're still God and you still remain. And, and your word is with us. And, and Jesus is with us. And the Holy Spirit with us. And we have nothing, nothing that can separate us from you. So God, just continue. Just continue. Just pour it into each one of us because we can't do because we just we can't we can't accomplish or we can't live life we can't live life like you want us to we you caught us to a life of joy and peace and happiness and you know God and comfort like we have to we have to seek you and go after you hard like we go after other things so God thank you for today and uh I just pray everybody here, everybody here, everybody watching, that you know what, today is the first day of a, a, a renewed relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen.